Coming up on Mount News this morning, we have some highlights from the first ever mini source summit held in Kentucky and the man behind the development of a couple of shopping centers here in Hazard comes back to the mountains for a special celebration. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News this morning. Good morning to you. It's Wednesday and it's 532. I'm Dakota Makris. Let's take it over to Brandon Robinson for a look at your forecast in a rainy morning. It is and Brandon remind me is the rain going to continue throughout the day? No, no, not, oh, not, good. not good. the whole day. Good. Just part of the day. Okay. I think by lunchtime will be drying out, but the clouds will continue all day long. That'll keep it a touch cooler for us across our region. Let's take a look at those conditions for the last few hours and some heavy pockets of rain rolled through and now they're starting to roll out. Still a little bit more to our south, so this system not quite cleared us just yet, but I think by again 11, 10, 11, 12 o'clock we'll start to see drier conditions prevail. Some fog up on top of Whitesburg Pine Mountain this morning on US 119 there and the 40s there this morning, so not too bad. 46 Middlesboro and Harlan are warm spots this morning. 37 and a host of those from more Head all the way over to Logan and Pikeville. Uh, pretty cold spots as well this morning. So kind of mixing it about 39 there. Rain chances will continue for a little while longer. They go to stray as we head toward 11 o'clock. Sunrise 653 this morning. Sunset 635. Almost 12 hours apart. Getting closer. Although the time changes this weekend and a cool day ahead, but temperatures only in the mid to upper 40s. Dakota. All right, Brandon, thank you all. A Madison County home invasion suspect is due in court today. Shannon Gilday is accused of killing Jordan Morgan last month. Jordan was staying with her father, former state lawmaker Wesley Morgan. Troopers say Gilday may have targeted the home for its underground bunker. His, preliminar his preliminary hearing is set for 930 this morning. Students in Williamsburg were sent home early yesterday because of a bomb threat. Williamsburg police officers say students at Williamsburg Independent School were evacuated after the threat. They say the building was searched and no hazardous or explosive devices were found. Police say they are still investigating and right now it's not clear who made the threat. Well, she's known as the seafood lady and is sharing her experience after her restaurant in Louisville was the target of gun violence. Four people were sent to the hospital during the weekend. The owner said it could have been much worse. Olivia Russell talked to her for the first time since the shooting. I'm just trying to put the pieces back together and be able to move forward. Putting the pieces back together as they're falling apart, literally. Yeah. The shattered glass constantly falling inside the restaurant. That sound and the bullet holes bring back scary memories for Nichelle Thurston. Each time it shatters, it takes you back to that very moment when it was happening. Thurston said it was a moment she'll never forget. From hearing the gunshots to seeing the blood, then the screams and cries as she ran inside to find her children. Just remember, you know, making sure everybody was safe. And at, at one moment, everyone ended up outside. You know, I, I was running in and they were running out. Four people hurt in the drive-by shooting. They're all expected to survive. While she's heartbroken that it happened in the first place, She's just thankful everyone will be okay. Now she's worried about the rest of the city, feeling like there's no safe space out there. With the violence being everywhere over Louisville now, um, I, I knew it would be here soon. Unfortunately, I didn't think it would be at my front door, um, but it, it is and now I feel obligated to be a part of advocating and, and stopping the violence. There's no secret recipe for how to move on after a shooting. Thurston said she won't be scared away from her own restaurant. For now, all she can do is sweep up, pray, and keep cooking. That was Olivia Russell reporting. So far, LMPD has not released a description of the car or how many people they are looking for. Well, police in Louisville are searching for a person who broke into a salon Saturday night, stealing thousands of dollars worth of products. Just after 10 o'clock Saturday, surveillance cameras captured a woman breaking in the front door of the Perfect Imperfection Salon. The owner says those products were $10,000 worth of Botox and dermal fillers, something detectives say could be dangerous if it is not used by a trained professional in a clinical setting. Well, a Pikeville man will serve 125 months in prison. Eugene Sisko III was convicted in November of wire fraud and health care fraud. Sisko operated several clinics that treated patients addicted to opioids. He deceived patients into paying hundreds of dollars per month in cash for treatment by falsely claiming his clinics were not eligible to bill Medicaid for certain services they provided. The jury also found Sisko engaged in a health care fraud scheme that caused a loss of 
more than $2 million to the Medicaid and Medicare programs. Cisco must serve 85% of his prison sentence and was also ordered to pay $5.7 million in restitution. Well, this week is National Consumer Protection Week, and Attorney General Daniel Cameron wanted to share three main types of scams that reported to his office in 2021. The Attorney General's office reported more than 7,000 consumers reported scams, which accounted for nearly $12 million in losses. The three types of scams AG Cameron saw were investment scams, impersonation scams, and identity theft. Now, to report a scam, you can go to the Attorney General's website. You can also find tips on how to avoid scams and fraud. The first ever mini source summit is now in the books and officials say it was a success with more than 600 people attending and more constructive conversations than anyone could have count. WIMT's Buddy Forbes has more as the ideas flow out of Ashland and through Appalachia. Each of you plays a hand in changing the perception of Eastern Kentucky. Communities coming together. Well, you know, the mini summit allows it to be a more specific type of uh, conversations. Bringing conversations about tourism and revitalization to the table. Well, a summit like this is fantastic because tourism is not done city by city. It's really done by region. The SOAR Mini Summit wrapped in Ashland Tuesday. We're really not competing with one another. We're competing with the rest of the world out there. Providing a platform to get everyone on the same page and promoting what the region has to offer. Because when travelers come into a state or a region, they're not looking at county lines or city boundaries. They're looking for experiences. With workshops and panels to feature some of the ways towns are seeing success, highlighting their assets. You know, what we sell is really the backdrop of your life. From street murals to social media. Our reach, we're not limited by just the amount of people that drive through our region. Hundreds of minds sharing tips of the trade with professionals from six different states. About how they can share some of those wins across county lines, across city lines, into other communities. And though it is the fuel many attendees say they need it. After all this time, we're still talking about it. Yeah. Organizers say the true test is how it translates from the center stage. And I hope that, some, you know, whether it's Pikeville or somebody going back to Stanton, they find one or two things that they can implement easily and they see an impact on it. Then it's been a success, what we've been trying to do here. To the community streets. In Boyd County, Buddy Forbes, WYMT Mountain News. Those involved say the mini summit was more than they expected, and some city officials are already lining up to have the next mini event hosted in their neck of the woods. Roy Drinkard is a businessman from Alabama with decades long connection to the economic development here in Hazard and other southeastern American cities. He's also 101 years old. On Tuesday, Hazard officials and students at Hazard High School hosted Drinkard for a long-awaited birthday celebration, saying he's loved visiting Hazard during the last three decades. And he is guided by a simple principle in life and business. Life is really not what you make it, it's how you take it. It's 90% how you take it. 10% what you make it. Well, he hopes his projects made life a little better in the communities he helped develop. Well, Tuesday was International Women's Day, a day to celebrate the accomplishments and roles of women around the world. Our Jordan Mullins talked with officials in Pikeville on the accomplishments local women are making here in the mountains. March 8th is International Women's Day, and folks are celebrating in Pikeville. Many of our downtown business owners are female and, and are having a tremendous impact on the revitalization of our downtown. Um, you know, the things that are happening here in downtown Pikeville couldn't happen without those businesses and their leadership. Female-owned businesses thrive downtown, and their contribution to the local economy is massive. You can look around our downtown district and see so many woman, female-led um, businesses. I think it gives us a sort of camaraderie, and we're always looking to lift one another up. Business is only one contribution, all the while also contributing to local government creating, planning, and being a leader for the entire community. You know, they make significant contributions to everything that, that happens here. And a lot of the, they lead a lot of the very best ideas and very, very best events that, that come to fruition. Recognizing and meeting the needs of their region. If there's like one thing a Hill woman knows how to do, it's get things done. And that's definitely for sure. Whenever you look at these planning committees and these, these boards and things like that, they're definitely filled with the faces of strong Appalachian women. And getting things done as only a woman can. In Pikeville, Jordan Mullins, WYMT Mountain News.
Ellswick said downtown businesses, which are predominantly owned by women, are the backbone of the city's economy and the revitalization, revitalization of the downtown area. We well, just had this morning, we celebrate one of the most iconic and accomplished childhood toys in history. That's on the way next. And as the rain chances wind down today, all eyes turn toward the weekend and some possible winter weather. Yep, not the latest on what's possible in about three minutes.